Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton and uh, welcome to my uh, oil painting class today. Thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoy this painting. We're going to do an oil painting <clears throat> that was seen from Glacier National Park. It's called Running Eagle Falls and uh, I took this photo in 2003 I believe and uh, thought I would paint it today for our upcoming oil painting class which is <clears throat> August 17th, 2013. So. Um, let me go over the paints very quickly. We're using the Bob Ross oil paints, as you may remember if you've watched other of my classes. And uh, I'll explain them here. We have the standard palette, uh, titanium white. We have phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cadmium yellow over here, yellow ochre, Indian yellow and bright red. I have added a uh, color to the Bob Ross palette which is uh, ultramarine violet. Um, you can see a little bit of running on my palette. I'm using a vertical uh, palette that's made of glass and uh, some of the paints have a little more oil in them than others so they're starting to run slightly because I have this mounted vertically so it's easy to photograph the palette as I paint and I can show you what colors I'm using. So. Please forgive a little bit of the oil runniness. Most of Bob Ross paints are very thick and heavy bodied and do not run uh, usually. Uh, but I've opened some new tubes of paint here so I'm getting a little sap green running and uh, some of the yellows. But uh, that's no big problem. We'll, uh, we'll deal with that. Okay, so um, I also want to go over with you the brushes that we're using. Um, and uh, we're using the standard Bob Ross brushes that uh, uh, he has the one inch landscape brush. I'm using a uh, the uh, painting knife, the uh, the small painting knife that he has. I'll be using a number three fan brush as well. And I added to the Bob Ross palette a filbert brush called a number 10 filbert. I also have a flat uh, brush that I may or may not use. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It's a number uh, 12 bristle uh, flat or bright brush and I also have the Bob Ross um, script liner which is a uh, number two script liner so with that in mind we will uh, try to get started with this painting I'm doing this scene basically without uh, any sketch um, I probably should put some sketch on the on the canvas just to give me an idea where the uh, main elements are um, so I'll do that for you now um, I have a big uh, mountain coming down on the, the left side. have a small gap here where there's a waterfall. And then there's another big rocky uh, mountain on the right side, part of the, the side of this waterfall. comes down like this. And the center of the waterfall is very narrow at the top. It's, it's called Running Eagle Falls or Trick Falls, which means there are two actual falls coming out here. So I have... A falls coming over the top and running into a second falls that's coming out of this center area and they all sort of go down into a nice little pool, wading pool almost here in the bottom. Um, have a lot of rocky, um, um, big rocks, a lot of trees, some interesting trees. There's a small mountain in the background I'm going to kind of sketch in here uh, making a melodic line. You may have heard me talk about that before. Um, but that mountain will be far in the distance. We'll have a couple trees coming up this way and the mountains over here. I think maybe I'll put in a, a big pine tree or two over here on the right side. But that's all I want to do for a sketch. Uh, big waterfall here, water in the foreground, and uh, two big rocky cliffs where the water has eaten out of those, uh, out of that. So that's all I want to do for the sketch. Let me zoom in slightly on that and let you see hopefully what what it looks like. I'm going to get my camera angled here just right so we don't have any uh, missed parts of the canvas. It's a little hard to see, but I think you can see some of the, uh, the sketches there that I did. So with that in mind, um, I think we're ready to get going. I've told you about the paints, told you about the brushes. This again is Running Eagle Falls, Glacier National Park, Montana, and uh, we will get going. I'm going to use a little bit of liquid white. Um, I modified the Bob Ross painting technique a little bit by using some different brushes, at least one other color that he doesn't have in his palette. 
and I minimize where I put the liquid white and I only put it on typically when I need it and I'm ready for it as opposed to painting the entire canvas. As you can see if I would cover the entire canvas with liquid white we would lose our sketch. So um, in uh, an effort to keep the sketch I'm going to leave, leave that on there and minimize the amount of liquid white that I put on. So I'm going to start here with just some in the sky because we want to have this paint to go on very smoothly in the sky. It's not going to be a big sky uh, but it is going to have a, uh, a nice soft sort of blue. We'll use a little bit of our uh, thalo blue probably for this sky. The waterfall is going to be right in here. I'm going to throw in some liquid white for it right now uh, and just remind me where it is as much as anything. Uh, so I'll put in this bit of liquid white right in here so you can see the waterfall already starting to show up uh, in this painting with just liquid white. So if I need a little more liquid white to help the paint flow a little bit I will throw some more in there but pretty much uh, that's going to be what I want right now. This is all going to be water down here in the foreground um, and I'll be doing that later. We typically paint, use a painting process that um, Typically we paint the farthest thing first, which is the sky, then the clouds, then we paint the distant mountains, then we come a little closer and paint some distant trees, and as we move forward in the painting, the, the colors get a little darker, a little more uh, distinct, um, and uh, they get a little bolder, and uh, so it, it helps uh, continue that illusion of, of distance, and uh, so much of painting is about fooling the eye, fooling the uh, uh, person looking at it to make things look three-dimensional that uh, really are not because we're painting on a two-dimensional canvas here. Okay, so for the sky I'm going to use just a little bit of this uh, phthalo blue. The phthalo blue is a very potent color. You don't need much. I have not cleaned my brush. I just left the liquid white on there and I'm just touching every little so slightly into this uh, phthalo blue that's on the palette here and I will put that in the sky up here, a little darker. Since I got liquid white on the canvas already, it does thin it out a little bit. Uh, but I want to get a very light sky going. It's a, it's a light, bright day, high clouds, and uh, not a lot of blue in the sky. Uh, so let's just see if we can do that. Put some dark in there. if we. We throw in some dark here and there, mix it, blend it, and uh, I'm going to touch just a small amount of alizarin crimson in the same brush and move it down here toward where the mountain meets the uh, sky. And I think that might be about it. I'm going to put a little more white in here. Um, Okay, that's a nice little soft sky. Take a few strokes, cross it horizontally to blend it out, and that will be our sky. Okay, in the distance I have a mountain back there. I still haven't washed my brush. I'm going to use this brush and put a little of this uh, ultramarine violet in it, right over the paint that's on there. I have phthalo blue, I have a little bit of alizarin, it's pretty well gone, liquid white, and now I'm putting a little bit of this ultramarine violet in the brush. See if I can get a light lavender colored mountain here in the distance. And instead of using a painting knife I'm going to try to do this with the brush. And the canvas is now dry so I need more paint uh, on, the, on the brush. But it has to be a little darker than the sky behind it otherwise it won't show up. Run it over here a little bit into this uh, area that's going to have some mountains and or some close-up rocks. We'll be covering up some of this, but I want this to at least be in there so we have some other colors back behind there. I don't want that to be totally dry canvas back in here. So just adding a little titanium white now with the uh, ultramarine violet. See if I can get a little more of this mountain done here on the... Uh, 
as it comes down into here this way. And we can leave it a little fuzzy on top even because it, it could be a little foggy up there on top. It does, cannot be real sharp edges up there. We want it to be soft and fuzzy. In a photograph, if you notice, uh, as all photographs are, every edge is sharp. So you have a hard time trying to, to try to paint from a photograph. Sometimes they can be your worst enemy because they basically have everything sharp. And to give a painting depth and give it uh, the illusion of distance, you want to have soft and fuzzy edges here in the distance. You don't want it to be all uh, sharp edges as your photograph may show you. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in here, maybe darken up just a little bit in some spots. Still using this big old brush. Uh, and I'm going to put some fine trees back there in the distance. And uh, that's going to be just about what I want for this little mountain. So I've got a little bit of sky, a little bit of mountain. And uh, hopefully that's showing up well on the camera. We've been, uh, let me take a check here very quickly and see if we're looking good. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm going to get out my fan brush now, if I can find it, there it is. All right, these trees in the distance, I'm going to keep them in a sort of a bluish color as well. I'm going to take some titanium white and mix it with my blues over here. I've got Prussian blue and I've got phthalo blue on the palette. Put a little white with them. And I'll make them so they're darker. Now they have to be darker than the mountain because why? They're coming forward. They're closer to us. We want them to be slightly darker as we move forward. They have to be darker or they don't, it doesn't look right. So they are very slightly darker. Hope you can see that. Some of them are going to uh, stick out and we're going to have a couple layers of trees here. We want to mix the colors up. We don't want to keep this all one color of blue. We're not making another mountain in front of this mountain. We're making a stand of trees off in the distance. So use this fan brush, just making vertical strokes. Make them uneven. Make them some wide, some narrow. Don't make them all the same width, same color. Add some darks in there to give them some depth because typically there would be some darks inside these trees. But if you make it too dark, they'll look like they're coming right to the foreground. And that's not what we want. We want these things to stay in the distance so they have to be soft, light. Okay, so that's really all I want for those trees. And I'm going to put another little layer of trees in front of that. I'm going to add a little green to it. So I'm just going to pick up a little of my sap green over here that had this blue in it. And it's going to be a little darker uh, than the trees behind it, just so it shows up um, in front of them. If we make it slightly darker, it will look like these trees are in front of the trees behind it. So this whole section in here have some browns in there, get some ochres in there maybe. They don't have to be perfect greens. I don't want everything to be a perfect green. So you can see now, as I'm pulling these down, these trees are, they definitely look like they're in front of the ones behind them. So we're already putting on a, a lot of depth in this painting already. As you can see, we've got the sky, the clouds, the distant mountains. Then we've got a row of bluish colored trees. And now we're putting in a row of sort of green and, and brown trees that are a little in front of those. And I'm mixing up colors on my palette here with uh, using some of this Prussian blue and mixing it in. It gives me a darker green. Uh, gives me some dark places. But notice none of these trees are the same height, same width. There's a varying set of trees here. Some are taller than others, some are wider than others. And that's what makes paintings interesting. If you vary your shapes, vary the distance between them, vary everything you can think of, vary the color, 
vary the width, vary the height. Okay, we're coming down now into this area where we do have some, a lot of brush and things that look like they might be uh, small trees or brush or whatever. I'm going to make it a little darker. We're coming down toward this waterfall. I want to make sure that we have plenty of dark behind the waterfall because it is it has to stand out. It's sort of our center of interest. So I'm just going to keep putting this on here, see what we get. A little sap green, add some ochres, change the color, change the width of these things, put some darks in, lights. So I'm just trying to cover most of this canvas over here now. These are going to go up, some of them are going to go up very high because this kind of goes right out of the top of the painting over here on the right side. and. Uh, so I'm just going to keep adding, adding some blues, adding a little black, adding a little um, sap green. So this is just a whole stand of trees that are much closer over this waterfall. Here we're going to have a nice backing background, I should say. So I'm just mixing up colors now, getting something that's interesting. Throwing in a little, that dark violet helps me make some darks in here as well. So you see just with this fan brush, how much you can do in a, making a stand of trees off in the distance. So I have really um, several layers in this painting, and every layer makes it look like it's deeper, has more depth in the painting. Um, one, two, three, four, maybe five layers already just to get to these trees. So every layer I can put on as I bring them forward, I want them to be a little darker. But every time I do this, I'm making it look like this is a lot of distance between where this waterfall is and where the uh, trees are. And as long as I keep them fairly um, fairly uh, impressionistic is the word I'm looking for. Um, they will look like trees off in the distance. Okay, let's see. Here. I've got some trees sticking up here. I'm picking up some of that liquid white on this right side, if you notice. It's getting a little lighter over there. So that gives me an opportunity to put some dark in front. So I'll come back and get a little my blues, either Prussian blue or phthalo blue, and just put right over it. Look at this, how that gives you another layer looking here. I'm going to run this up like this. Okay, so that's pretty good. On the left side over here, these actually get darker, and there's a lot of uh, rockiness in this area. So let's leave it at that. I've got the top of the waterfall here pretty well defined with my, got my liquid white on there that I put on. And um, so that's pretty good. We can actually uh, come in here and maybe take our knife and uh, scrape in a few tree trunks in here by just throwing in some things like this. Looks like some, maybe some dead trees or whatever back here. Don't want to do a lot of this. We'll, we'll drive people crazy with too much of this, but just a few flicks of the knife and all of a sudden you've got some other additional trees back there. Okay, so we've been uh, going here for about maybe 20 minutes, I would want to think. And uh, we've gotten uh, a good part of this background done. Okay, let's look at now the left side. I want to make this, this left side is going to be the darkest part of the painting. If you uh, see the value plan or the uh, value map that I made of this painting, uh, we actually have uh, the dark side. This is really dark. Sun is shining from the left to the right, so these rocks over here on the right side are very well lit up with a lot of well-defined shadows on this side. Left side, the shadows are a little less distinct, and it's darker. Um, so I've got in my background there that I want, and uh, let me just start on this left side now. I'm going to put in some underpainting here. I think maybe this is a time to add just a little more liquid white. I think if, by putting in the liquid white, we do uh, minimize the amount of uh, paint that we use. 
Before I do that, I need to wash out this big landscape brush so I don't have a lot of this blue and other colors in here. Okay. On the left side, let's put in some liquid white. Really all I'm doing it for is I know where this where this uh, goes now so I don't have to worry about losing my sketch because I already know where it is. And uh, so I'm just going to put this in to help the paint flow smoother. It will take less paint uh, and I can uh, do it even faster with this liquid white. Uh, if you've ever watched Bob Ross on television, you know that he does one of his large 18 by uh, 32 paintings um, in about 20, 24, 25 minutes. Um, we've probably already done, spent 20 plus minutes. We haven't, um, and all we have done is this. So I, I do paint a lot slower uh, because I don't have a TV time constraint like he did. Um, and YouTube allows me to upload about any size video I want to, so I can make this as long as I need to. So the idea here is to uh, give ourselves some base, base colors on the left side. I'm going to start with some of my browns, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna. Put a couple of those in the, in the brush. I'm just going to start laying them in here to get in some. I'm going to get some base color underneath here. It's going to represent these rocks over here. I'm going to put trees over it so I'm not too worried about exactly what it looks like right now. But I just want to get some color in. There's um, a lot of rocks here, but most of them have vegetation or trees, something growing over them. So this will give me the, the base going down to the water level here. Put this in. I can come back with a knife and put in some very sharp edges for these rocks. Um, I definitely want to make sure I have these over alongside this narrow waterfall here. Okay, that's... Alright. So that's a good underpainting and it went on fairly quickly. I did not use a lot of paint to do it, um, but it's a base base for my uh, what's going to go on over here on the left side. Throw in a few darks here and there. We're going to have some changes of color. I want to by adding in some midnight black. I get some gray out of this. Get some other shapes. That'll do me for now. So a lot of what's over the top of that is green, dark green, very dark green uh, trees and uh, shrubs. So let's keep our green going. We've got this uh, sap green all over the place here. We've got some Prussian blue, Throw in a little of this ultramarine violet. That'll give me some darks. And uh, I'm going to start here on the left side with some uh, very dark stuff going on here. Okay, that's not quite as dark as I want it. The thing you got to remember when you put that liquid white down is that the as soon as you put the brush on it, that white starts diluting the paint color and you end up with a lighter color than you thought. But the paint goes on much faster, you don't use nearly as much paint and uh, so we can deal with that. We can always put layers of paint over what's there and uh, got to get this darker. It's got to be darker. So I'm using a sap green. Throwing a little of Lizrin in there. Lizrin, Lizrin will give us a darker gray and gray some of this down and get some darker colors. Um, I got some rocky things that start down here about this far in it is there. You know, we got a lot of rocks in there. I can come back and overlay some rocks over this even. Um, dark, dark, dark.
Now I'm using a little finer detail with this brush, making some narrow. I have to make this distinct from the distance there. These definitely have to be darker than what's beside it there. Okay, this is starting to look the way I want it. These trees, since they're closer, have to be darker than the trees that are in the middle part here. If I don't make these darker, they'll look like they all blend together and at the same plane. They're not. They're closer to us. So these have to be much darker here. So I'm just putting in some really dark blobs of paint now. See how this is going to work with this brush. I got some different colors. I got some browns up here. I got some blues in here, a little dark, almost black in this area. Um, and as I keep changing and modifying these colors, I get more the look of more trees coming down the side of this cliff that runs down by the uh, this waterfall. Again, these are still fairly impressionistic. I'm not trying to, to paint every every branch and every on every tree, I'm trying to make sure that I've got plenty of darks around this area here so this stands out very strongly right here. So that tells the viewer that this is a lot closer than those trees behind. Another trick we have of trying to make trees look in the distance, we can always use the uh, what Bob Ross calls the misting approach where he pounds the canvas in a stippling effect and makes the liquid white from underneath come through. Um, and I could do that here. I could show some mist along these trees uh, on the left side that would help um, make it look like there's a mist kind of flowing up from this waterfall here on the left or on the this waterfall in the middle, I should say. Uh, these have to be good and dark. And remember, the sun is coming from our left, so this part of the cliff of this this wall of rocks is really in the shadow. Almost all of it's in the shadow. So anything that we describe over here has to be nice and dark. All right, let me see. I'm going to put just a little more in here above this part of the waterfall. Make sure that we have that defined. It could be misty there and we will make it misty here in a little bit but I want to make it uh, get these colors on. So I've got this light brown underneath which you can see coming through in some spots. You can see the colors of the trees are varying, varying these colors so that they basically look like we've got multiple just tons of trees in this area coming down this side. Um, okay, let me step back and look at this for a minute. Make sure it's reading the way I want your eye to be fooled. Um, we do have a couple of trees that stick up here on the on this side. They're kind of in somewhat in silhouette, but I'm going to stick them out here right now. This area here. You get your brush. You get your uh, fan brush loaded nicely with paint, dark colors. I'm using both blues and some midnight black. If you get a very sharp edge on that fan brush, it will help you make the trunk of the tree. And you can just start touching like this. And going up, then you start using the corner. And just touch both sides, spreading it out a little wider as you come down. Get some more paint because that lighter paint underneath lightens what's up in your brush. Get a good dark trunk in there. This thing actually almost goes off the painting here at the top, so I'm going to put a few more things like that. It's just kind of sitting there on the side of this mountain ready to fall off at any time. There are some other ones that are here that are not quite as ready to fall off yet, but they are leaning a little bit. Try to keep them as distinct as we can. A couple more things in here like this. 
Okay, then we've got some more trees and bushes and stuff down here, rocks. These things have to set on something, so I'm going to paint some dark in here. Come back and put a few more things in front of it. We've got a sort of a ledge. I'm about getting my knife out. I'm going to try this knife now with a little bit of uh, dark sienna. Maybe a little bit of Van Dyke and see if I can put sort of a little rock in here. So that's helping describe that surface. If you make it vertical, make these streaks from the knife vertical. If you make them vertical, it's going to look like this is definitely a rock face or a cliff coming down. If you don't move the knife in the correct way, it's going to tell the viewer something else, which we don't want the viewer to think these are laying flat up here. This is a rocky drop-off. So that helps define that a little bit. A few more darks over here on the left. Maybe I'll put a couple more here like this. And it's actually what I'm doing here is giving ourselves another layer of of painting. And so the rock is actually uh, standing out. I'm going to put just a few highlights on here, very light, because there is some sun hitting this. It's not totally in darkness. And I did that by taking just a little of my titanium white, get a little roll on there that's lighter than the brown that's in these rocks, and just sort of skim it over the top. Okay, that's a nice layer. Um, we actually have a few trees that sort of stand out up here on top. I'm going to get a little bit of this paint and just sort of make some vertical streaks here like this. These give us some more interesting shapes at the top of this mountain that look like maybe some dead trees or whatever. Okay, that's not bad. Let's come over here. We're going to put in a little more. I'm using this knife. I'm going to put another layer of rock. This kind of comes down and gets darker as it goes down. Browns. This actually comes down and the trees start disappearing as you get further down. I'm going to put a few more bushes in here along this area, but I want to make sure this shows that we're dropping down off into the water. A little too blue there for my taste, but I want this to Throw in some blues, throw in some browns, throw in some blacks. A few highlights here and there, but the, the strokes, the knife strokes, tell the viewer what he's looking at. That this has sort of a rugged, rocky this to it that's actually in the dark. And at the bottom, as you know, we can kind of pull this up a little bit with the brush to get it some smoothness, and I'll come back with a knife and sort of fine-tune that, but right now I'm going to throw in this really dark base, if I can get it dark enough. And then we'll come back with the knife, go over that a little more, using the, the palette knife again. We're just laying paint on top of paint. Darks. few horizontal strokes will look like they're, these are the tops of rocks back here, and if I put dark in front of light, it gives me enough contrast to make you think there's another layer of rocks in there. So this is starting to look about the way I want it. I'm going to throw just a few more um, trees and uh, and some ochres here, maybe a little bit of this yellow to brighten up some of it, a little cad yellow. But right in here we've got some other bushes that I want to lighten up just a little to give ourselves some, some other colors in here. I don't want it to be all dark and gloomy totally. So I'm going to throw in some other tree-like bushes here, just 
pop them in with the uh, fan brush and then kind of go over them. They don't have to be exact. We're not painting exact trees here. I just want it to look like there's some other bushes in there and I'm going to get some darks underneath so we have a little bit of contrast here. There we go. Picked up a little of that ultraviolet and stuck it in there. So it looks like they're growing on something. Um, we can even put in a scrape in a few. Didn't work too well. Let me use my knife. The knife always works. Get that knife cleaned off so I don't put the wrong colors in there. But let's do this. Something like that. Looks like there's a few more trees in the area. How are we doing on time here? Let me check our time. 30, 35, 36 minutes. Okay, I have cleaned my knife, cleaned out my fan brush now, and I want to not quite done. I think I want to get this filbert out. It has some nice textures on it for some additional bushes in this area on the left side. Spent a lot of time on this left side, but it's it is closer than the uh, the ones behind it. So I'm going to put in a few more blobs here that sort of look like there's some some sort of trees. I'm just touching this and letting it pull off whatever it will. Um, leaving the brush strokes there to show up so you can actually see there's it's a conscious effort to do that it's not a mistake okay and we'll just throw some down here um, so these little things wherever they can find a crack to grow in bushes we'll try to uh, establish a foothold and try to grow okay something like that i don't need to do much more. Starting to get the feeling of there's some other greenery in the area. Okay, that's pretty good for the left side. I think I'll stop with that. Not too crazy about this little tree here on the right. I think I need. Uh, if I mess with it too much, I'll mess it up. Okay. All right, so that's our craggy rocks on the left side. Right side rocks are a lot, a lot brighter. Uh, they have a lot uh, more white in them. The sun's shining on them, and as a result, there's a lot of um, areas that have uh, sharp contrasts, sharp uh, shadows, and we want to. Uh, Show those as well. And so let's see, let's start. This is all dry canvas. I have no liquid white on there. I think I'm going to put some liquid white just to help the uh, help the uh, paint flow. Where's my big brush? Here we go. All right, right side. So we'll put in what liquid white we need for this, and uh, so I'm going to have liquid white over most of this canvas. Uh, but it's helping me get the paint on smoother and faster. This is all big rocky surfaces over here on the right side, <clears throat> all the way down to the water line, which is right about in here. So 
see the water is going to flow about down to here. And we actually have some rocky things that come down this way as well. So, all right, that'll start and that'll. So you can kind of see where that next set of um, big rocks are going to show up, and uh, they're going to be a lighter color with uh, a lot of white in them. And uh, so, what's my color going to be? Let me see here. I'm going to try this. Don't want it to be the same color as on the left side. So I'm going to try some. Dark Sienna. I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin in it and see if I can get a color here that is different than what was on the left side, but lighter. Put a little yellow in there. See if I can uh, yellow it up. I'm putting a little yellow ochre in there. That gives me a nicer yellow color from the sun. You would guess that the sun might turn that. So I'm just using this big old brush to throw in some light, light colors. White, dark sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit of alizarin, not much. Alizarin will eat your colors alive if you use too much of it. So this is just a big area of rock over here. Our challenge is going to be to make this look very interesting. We have big sections of canvas on the right side, which you can paint very quickly with the brush, but it doesn't look like rocks and doesn't look like a cliffs that would run down toward the side of this waterfall. We have some nice angular sections in it that really highlight the rocks. So this is a decent color for what we're wanting here. I think maybe I'll put a big old tree on the right side, maybe. If I, I feel I need it to balance this big dark on the left. I may put a dark tree on the right side here, but I'll make that decision <clears throat> as we move along here. Okay, so that side now has the uh, big rock. And we are just about 45 minutes long, 43, 44. Okay, so we have the trees in the background already there. These rocks sort of stand in our face, if you will, on the right side. So I'm going to try to use that same color, but I'm going to darken it now with some uh, some of the same colors of brown, dark sienna, a little bit of uh, Van Dyke brown. And start up here and see if I can just put in some things that look like we've got some mixture of rock coming down. Uh, using ochre. fairly dark on this side of the waterfall. And I'll probably come back now with my filbert and see if I can fill in some of the nice gaps and make some make these rocks a little more distinct. They're, they're getting a interesting uh, 
impressionistic effect the way they are, but uh, I want them to be a little more distinct. Okay, let's stop with the knife for a minute and use our filbert and see what happens here. Okay. Filbert, I'm getting some of this just plain brown in there. Okay, I'm going to start up here. Just run right off the top of the canvas up there. So making small little marks with this filbert actually helps define some rockiness. Changing the color. One of the rules I try to abide by is try not to paint more than two inches of the canvas without changing something, without changing the color, changing the uh, texture. Change something, put some interest in it. If you do that, you'll always have a nice looking painting because the viewer will have interesting things to look at. If you make it just bland and boring like this down here, it's not very interesting and you'll lose your viewer's attention in a hurry. So as you can see, I've got several colors going. I've got some ochre here. I've got some alizarin crimson. I reddened it up a little bit, throwing back in some darks. So these are some, there are some big rocks in here and uh, they do have some dark shadows under them where it defines the shadows that uh, shows them overhanging, sticking out. And there is some grasses and a few things growing on this right side, but not nearly as much as there was on the left side. So we'll try to uh, reflect that. So this big section, if I look at it and see, try to measure a couple of inches in either direction, see if I have some interesting shapes, interesting colors, so that the eye has something to look at that will give it some enjoyment as opposed to just moving very quickly through this rockiness on the right side. So by using this filbert I've been able to put a lot more textures, a lot more smaller brush marks actually than the, the knife. The palette knife makes these big broad strokes which sometimes really look good. And I'm going to put a couple more in there right now. Darker. Get me some dark Van Dyke brown on here. A little roll of paint. Come back in here and see if I can put in some shadow areas. Like that. Maybe there's a couple more over here. Between black and dark Van Dyke. Get some nice... We want these to point down. So the way to do that is to make the knife stroke angular in the direction you want the rock face to go. You're trying to tell the viewer that this rock is going down like this. These angles tell the viewer, oh, that's a, kind of a steep cliff here which would make sense if it's been eroded by this waterfall over 
years and years and probably centuries it has eroded this rock. So these streaks tell the viewer what's happening. So I'm getting nice differences of color, I'm getting contrast, light and dark, dark and light, different shapes. Look at abstract shapes. Don't try to have circles or triangles or concave shapes. Concave are shapes that look like a soup bowl. Convex shapes look like the dome of a mountain. You don't want them to have that roundedness. You want to try to mix them up, make sure you have differences, and it makes a much more pleasing painting if you do it that way. If you fall into the trap of making rounded surfaces, you'll bother the viewer. You may find them in nature. There's some places where nature gives you perfectly round things, perfectly convex things, perfectly concave things, but they don't look that good in a painting. So we have to use our artistic license. All of you should have an artistic license by now, surely. If you don't have one, send me an email. I'll send you one if you've tried these paintings. Okay, so there's some interesting craggy rocks on the right side. Still impressionistic, but they're there. You can tell those are rocks and they're different shapes, different sizes, different colors. Over here we've got, I'm going to just kind of fill this in with my fan brush. And some redder color, see what happens when I do that. Get some oranges going maybe here. Original painting didn't have all these colors in it. Um, the rocks were really being bleached by the sun almost. They were all sort of a This, this light brownish color. Okay. Okay, let's see if that looks okay for a while. Now, the waterfall, you can see the waterfall, it's still sitting there with my liquid white from my very first painting. You can see the, the uh, secondary waterfall below it. And I haven't even put any paint on it other than the liquid white when we started. Um, so, that's the, that's the illusion that we're getting here is with the, just leaving it that way, it looks very, very natural. Um, I think I want to put a little paint over that, but I have to get my brushes cleaned out so I don't have any of this brown or black or dark colors in there. I want to put in some grays. I want to make that give myself a little gray here with the uh, using my violet, ultraviolet, some white. Put a little black in it, even a touch of black, maybe give me a gray. And part of this waterfall that's in is in shadow has some little grays in it, so I'll see if I can make some places that look like they're gray. As it comes down here, it starts meeting up with this other other waterfall. So we have a waterfall that's coming out of the rock in this area. And we have a waterfall that's coming over the top. So that's why they call this the 
Trick Falls is actually what it's called in the, in Montana when you hike out to this little place. Um, the sign calls it running. The name of it is Running Eagle Falls, but it is called Trick Falls because it has these two falls. Sometimes when the water is running off the top so hard, you cannot see both falls. You can only see one. But later in the summertime when this picture was taken was in July and the, the top falls had really narrowed and had sort of been minimized and there was still a lot of water coming out of the um, lower fall here but um, And in the late summer, like August, maybe September, that top falls is actually dried up. You can't even see it. Um, so the only water that would be coming out is trickling out of this lower fall area here. And I'm going to use this brush and sort of stipple in some fogginess using my white over this dark by just touching. This is the way we would do if we had liquid white underneath. We make this foggy looking area here. And you can do it by having liquid white underneath or putting liquid white on top and tapping it in. So I'm getting a foggy look to this. I want this to be another abstract shape. I don't want this to be a dome or a uh, convex sort of thing. I want it to have some interesting look to it. So I'm just stippling. So as this water comes down, it's brighter in some areas, darker in others. There's actually some rocks and some dark places in here that are actually has water flowing over it. So I'll see if I can fool the eye to believe that. Some white. Okay. Now this down here starts turning from gray to sort of a green color. Green, blue has some reflection of the sky in it. But we do have areas where it goes against that rock. So is this good enough? Let me see. I'm going to put a couple more streaks in here. Make, look, make sure the eye realizes this is a is going down. It's coming out of here like this. Down at the bottom, we end up with some shadows. End up with some more bright whites. Actually, that's better put on at the bottom with this little fan brush. If you've watched me make. <clears throat> make rocks before we actually will put in some dark here like this I'm using the violet now for because it was handy and then I take my fan brush and get some just a pure titanium white in it and sort of go over it like this pull down. It looks like there's some rocks and then there's some frothiness here at the bottom. And then it sort of just flattens out and starts reflecting the sky color in here. Picked up a little phthalo blue. Got a little bit of green in it. This color over here that's going to give ourselves some nice reflections on the left side. 
Phthalo blue had just a touch of that sap green in it. This was really pretty smooth here. So, getting very close to finishing this thing up. Thalo blue, just a touch of sap green, probably too much. Lighten it up. green color into the upper area. This area over here on the left starts getting slightly yellowish and brownish over here. You can start seeing the bottom of the, of the uh, water because it's so shallow here. So I'm going to change the color, add some more interest on the left side. One of the things we'll do is put some shadows over here to uh, reflect this is really in shadow from all the way out from here. Take some of this up here and pull it down. If you've ever watched Bob Ross, that's a neat trick he uses. Pulls it down straight. And then if you take a dry brush, or one with very little paint, and just go horizontally like this, you get some very neat reflections. And it looks like you've got the uh, reflection of that dark. I get some more dark in here. It's not quite dark enough to suit me right now. out my vertical streaks so what do you do put them back in easy always put dark over light oil painting is very forgiving in terms of if you make a mistake it's very easy to fix oil paintings not quite as easy with watercolors if you haven't seen some of my watercolors, you can look at uh, some of my watercolor paintings on the YouTube channel. Um, I will be putting some more watercolor paintings out here. I haven't uh, had time to get that done in the last 30 days, but I will have some watercolors out there shortly. Okay, let's see. We're getting put some more of this in here. Maybe a few highlights. Whoa, a lot of blue there. I didn't particularly want that, but what the heck. I just told you how easy it was to fix it. Let's see if I can fix it. Huh. Put a little brown or black over that. Come back put a little ochre over the top, which basically is the color I was trying to get to underneath that all that. And give some of the grassy colors. It actually turns to grass here in the foreground. It's hard to see. There's a, this kind of runs this way and then it runs into a little stream. Okay, what's that look like now? Yeah, that's looking pretty decent. Um, the rocks on the right, I think I'm going to add a few more uh, trees. I think I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. Put in this, put in a pine tree or two on the right. That, that big section on the right looks way too barren to me. So I'll see what this, if this works. Hmm. See if this works. Pound it in. Stick in some brighter colors for leaves, for branches. Yeah. Just pound them in there. Okay, do it again. Pick some more darker colors for a trunk. Black, dark blue, Prussian blue, 
violet give me a nice dark trunk here and put in some green colors for pound it in always come back and put the trunks in very easily with the palette knife greens put in some more bushes down here make it darker that's starting to help it balance out a little bit there's actually some scrub brush that actually is along the bottom of this painting so let's throw it in all stamped in there there's some darks here and there and the brush we have not used today the whole script liner let's see if I can get that guy out and uh, we will use the technique that we get some thinner on the brush and as we rub the thinner into the paint on the palette it gets very runny when it's very runny with this script liner you can actually paint right over what's there so I'm going to put a couple trunks in here maybe if I can do it right without messing it up <laughs> nice curved trunk I don't like curved trunks it's better and I got this going come over here and put in a few scraggly trees on this side that'll work put in some lighter colors here maybe okay so I'm getting some things that look like we got some more grasses growing I'm going to throw a few things still using this little brush sideways up here looks like we got some grasses growing up there throwing in some cad cad yellow with the green it's getting a lighter color that's going to stand out maybe lighten it up even more oh there are just little pops of green floating around on this these rocks up here here and there <clears throat> don't need much just to break it up because it still looks sort of all brown one color which I was trying to get away from all right maybe my filbert can finish that up just a little bit try some more of this in there the sun is really shining on this so anything that's got sun shining on it's going to be really bright so let's put a few oh, things like this there we go some green at the bottom little bushes here and there down here we'll finish up some of this we have a few brush strokes that look like we knew what we were doing Alright, little spots of green and uh, white colors up there that look like something's trying to grow. Alright, let me look at this now. I'll take a little minute to analyze it and see if there's anything I can do here at the last minute. I think we're pretty well finished. I like the way it looks. We've been going about an hour and ten minutes, so I think by the time I edit this down, we will have a painting just a little over an hour. So I think with that I'm going to stop and zoom back and tell you uh, thank you for watching again. And if you're in the area and can make my painting class on April 17th, I'd like to see you there. If not, try this painting yourself and uh, keep subscribing to me on YouTube. I have now grown to over 120 subscribers since the last painting. And I'm really happy about that, and I hope all of you who have subscribed really enjoy my painting and enjoy these free demonstrations. 
So until I see you again, uh, so long for now and keep painting. Goodbye.